Hi, I'm Trent Thompson, and I'm here with Nick Valenti. Hey, and uh, we're going to go through some more factory presets with you today. But uh, while we were setting up for the live stream, we had a couple of you ask about the Vox Humana uh, sound from the Polymoog. Um, so w we did our best in like two minutes to <laughs> approximate it. We're going to keep working on it. but. So, you know, we'll keep working on it. Anyway, so Nick is going to go through uh, more of the factory presets. And uh, just a reminder, we're live, we're unrehearsed. So if you have questions, uh, do feel free to, to jump in, ask, and uh, we'll do our best to answer as much as we can in uh, this next half hour or so. Um, I'm assuming we've gone through yes. this one. Yes. You can start with that if you want. Yeah, something I will say. Uh, personally, I really, really love all of the kind of smooth, organic, creamy sounds of this instrument that you can get. Um, it's just really not maybe what you'd first expect out of a uh, 48 oscillator polysynth, but it just it does that stuff so well. Um, so maybe we'll start going through some of the acoustic acoustic key sounds. Sure, we um, can do that. Because they they really shine, I think. I think really we, we're going to want to look through the, the main preset browser. A lot of what you saw us go through the other day was based around the, uh, around the uh, performance set. And, uh, but there, outside of those 64 presets, there's actually another uh, 300 and some odd in the instrument as there is. sound. Uh, we got a question, is there a preset randomizer? Not at this time. Um, it's a lot of instrument to do that with, so uh, it can certainly result in some pretty cool stuff, so we'll definitely make a note about that. Uh, funny enough, there is a preset name randomizer, <laughs> though, which will pick, I think, just like a couple adjectives and a noun from a huge dictionary, um, and it'll give you some funny stuff if you, if you need uh, some inspiration. <laughs> Keep going, yeah. Uh, it's more like a classic brass. Preset bank, there are a few really cool. It's this flute sound that I like. It's a little breathy, which is cool. If any of you are hearing a bit of a squeak, that is our uh, poor sustain pedal that is <laughs> under the table. Um, the other one has disappeared, so we're using a cheapie, but hey, it works. Uh, can you play between the preset used for the Between Worlds demo on SoundCloud? Hmm. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to try to listen to that one and see which one that is. Yeah, uh, maybe in a future video. Yeah, in a future video, I think. Oh, this is, you must have gone through this one, but this is a favorite. Yeah, the Sergio. 
Jump back to the main browser and take a look around and just pick some uh, pick some at random and see what we what we get here. This one's in the main uh, performance set. Y pad is a really great place to turn also for any of these presets. Almost every preset in here has it mapped and it can do some really cool, uh, diverse things. And th that's also XY pressure, so you can actually assign the X axis, the Y axis, and pressure of the pad to the same place, different places, or multiple places. Uh, we get a question Can mode one step through a sequence using analog triggers like the SH101? Uh, at launch, it w does not do that, but yes, it will do that, absolutely. <laughs> Touch that bends the strings. Yeah, there, there you, you go. go. That's going to be a really good one. So, this has after touch when you press down. And I'll add that vibrato. Uh, we will soon implement MPE, and that's going to be a really great patch for polyphonic after touch once we do. on and off, so I'm just going to have Nick keep playing. I'm just going to pop them on and off. 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 In a lot of cases, the effects are actually used very minimally. Um, they're used to add a little bit of space, a little bit of motion, so I'll do that a couple more times just so that you can hear that. Yeah, I'm going to look for one that... That one's got a bunch of reverb on it. So that's the reverb off, and on. Oh, I love this one, the toms. Oh, yeah. Very specific use <laughs> case, but... <laughs> This one has some very interesting splits. Um, it kind of shows how you could take a sound and break it up, a similar sound and break it up between different layers and create subtle variations and a continuous sound. Can you set the mixer channels to max so we can hear filter overdrive? So in the Moog One, uh, this instrument is not designed uh, the, the mixers are not really designed to overdrive filter the filter in the way that the subsequent 37 uh, is. 
But um, this would be an example of a patch with all the mixer channels uh, dimed to Rail the ladder filter. The SVF has a little bit of a different texture with the over. What we can do though is we can feed So what we can do is we can feed the state variable filter into the ladder filter and that will create a lot more drive and squelch. <laughs> about a snapshot you can keep playing so while Nick is playing let's say I make a change to this preset I'm gonna adjust the filter cutoff and you can see that the save button is now lit up but if I don't want to save let's say I'm happy with where we're at I just hit snapshot okay and I'm gonna make another change and I'm gonna hit snapshot again. So now, these snapshots are saved within the preset. And we can view those snapshots by pressing, so compare snapshot, right? Or is it gonna shift snapshot or? Yeah, yeah. so if we press shift and snapshot, we now have a view of the auto save. So the instrument will actually auto save certain changes in the background. And then we've got the two saved snapshots of where we were when I made the changes to the, uh, to the ladder filter. And then I can go in and say, ah, I really liked uh, the second snapshot that I took. So I just uh, select it. Yeah, there, <laughs> press the load snapshot soft button. And here we are. As it was. Yeah. And there we are. So it's minimal change, obviously, but that's how snapshots work, and they're saved with the preset. So if you have variations, you can save those over time. Is there chord mode in the ARP? Um, there is a chord learn feature uh, and uh, chord mode on the instrument, and uh, the arpeggiator actually plays through the note. So uh, there's no dedicated chord mode in the ARP, but you could feed chord mode with the ARP. Um, I can show linear FM, we have a request for that, kind of how that works, and go through some of the LFO waveforms. You can't uh, like draw any shape you want, but these are super, super flexible LFOs. They have really cool waveforms. Um, you want to just hit a init preset? You yeah, let's show do that? that. So uh, compare and shift, hold those down, you get to an init. Let's make it just a little more interesting. Um, so actually here, I'm just going to turn on um, VCO2. And uh, this section here, you have uh, the frequency modulation matrix. So I'm going to route 1 to 2, since I have 2 activated.
here. I'll team work with you. So as you can, as you well know, FM gets pretty wild, so. So we can actually use that here. We can uh, segue super seamlessly into the LFOs, huh? So if we do that again. Let's assign the LFO to that. So I'll hit destination on LFO one. Send it to the frequency, hit done. Should probably change that range. So Nick is in the modulation matrix and you get there by pressing the mod button. Um, where you can go in and edit existing modulation paths or create new ones. And so let's look at this LFO. You have four different, uh, these four different shapes here, you can really think of as four totally different cores. You have one core that's going to be the uh, triangle uh, sine core. So as I change the variation here, it'll show how you can move seamlessly between those two. The next one down is pulse, which will give you pulse width on the variation. The next is a uh, s uh, variable saw core similar to the oscillators. So you can get these lopsided, lopsided triangles. And uh, then you have a sample and hold, which mixes into a white noise, which is really cool to get these kind of random. chaotic sounds. Um, that one does really well when you assign it to uh, the pan control, because then each voice is going to be a random panning within a defined region and it'll help you get some of those wide lush sounds. So why don't you jump back to some more presets and while sure. you do that, I am going to just tackle a couple of these. Will Moog One owners be able to load additional eventide algorithms uh, a la the H9? Um, no, that, that's not a possibility uh, at this time. And uh, let's see, I'll let you play through some more sounds. seconds so you can get these really cool long yeah. uh, sounds. We do have a request to create an init patch and just crank the mixer and just have a, the filter wide open so if you want to do that sure. really quickly. Um, we'll just use all saw waves so you can just hear that. We use all saw waves and uh, I guess we can go through both all of them through both filters? Yeah you can do that we can go back and forth between the two. You want to blend between the two, or so I'm going to go to the ladder, the ladder, the state variable. Now the state variable has two modes, um, and I'm going to just change the mode on that right now. It's in series. I'm going to put it in parallel in the more page for that series. Sorry. back to the ladder. Uh, the other thing people always ask for is this one here. The unison, all 48 oscillators. You got a unison count.
back to some uh, back to some factory presets and. Uh, is there a clock input to sync Moog 1 to the modular clock? So the assignable CV gate inputs on the back uh, in the very near future will be able to uh, accept clock, accept different control voltages, gate signals. So, uh, so the answer to your question is it will absolutely be able to do that. And uh, let's see, is LFO variation a destination in the mod matrix? That is a good question. Uh, not at the moment, but, uh, but I am definitely going to pass that, pass yeah. that along. <laughs> we can do that, and we, yeah, we should, we should do, that. do that. Thanks for the tip. A bunch of cloud references in here. Here we what do. happens in there. <laughs> I think this is one where, where a lot of the a lot of the resonant movement is actually coming from the filter and modulation. So I'm gonna turn off the effects really quickly. So a lot of that kind of sweeping and kind of sparkliness is from the modulation of the state variable filter. I'll turn the effects back on. So we have some wave angle modulation too? Yeah, I think, I, I think that there's an impression that there's actually a lot of effects to use, uh, effects to use on a lot of the presets. And in, in actuality, a lot of the motion and things that are occurring are coming, uh, specifically coming from wave modulation, filter modulation, and multi-timbrality. question, what are these raw VCOs most sound akin to historically? Well, that's kind of an interesting thing because they don't really sound exactly like anything necessarily that we've done. And, and part of that has to do with the fact that the saw, for example, has a variable reset time. And one of the benefits of that variable reset time is that you can create different variations in sound. Uh, let's make us done with this. We'll jump to an init preset and we'll just talk yeah, you through that really quickly. Um, um, I can, do you want me to run through it or do you Absolutely, you go ahead, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to push this little more button here so the screen just zooms in on what uh, this oscillator is doing. We're just hearing one oscillator, filter's wide open. So what you can do is, uh, as Trent mentioned, this is a completely new oscillator design. Uh, it's a new electronic circuit that we've patented that has not been in a synth before. Um, it's, uh, you can see with the variable saw core when triangle mode that you can sweep from a saw all the way through to a ramp through a triangle. But if you go into saw mode, it's gonna shorten that difference. So you're just changing the reset time of the saw wave by little bits. So you're gonna start with a really classic Mogi, really sharp gritty kind of Voyager, Model D, Mini Moog wave. Uh, and you're gonna push that back to be a little bit softer and softer still. You can go through a lot of the classic kind of synth sounds of the you know, past few decades just by backing off that reset time because other uh, synthesizers um, in hardware that don't have that capability will all have a different fixed 
uh, saw reset time that gives it a lot of unique characteristics. And, and so just to be specific, in the case of the saw wave, you're changing the reset time. And in the case of the, in the, case of the variable triangle, what you're actually doing is varying the rise and fall time of the triangle wave. So we're not using a traditional wave shaper in this oscillator. Um, we're actually adjusting the rise and fall time of a triangle to, s to create a saw, a triangle, and a ramp wave, or creating that saw wave and varying the saw reset time. And then there's the pulse wave, which is, which is pretty traditional pulse wave, and then you can blend between those. Uh, unlike most pulse waves, though, the pulse width is not dependent on the uh, triangle wave in any way, so you can freely sweep the pulse width and combine it with a freely swept wave angle. To get these really wild, rich sounds. And of course, you can uh, modulate that as well. So that's no effect and no filter modulation at all, and you're, you already get a lot of uh, dynamics of that sound. question, if you run the LFOs at audio rate, can you route them to the mixer so you can hear them as extra oscillators? You cannot route them to the mixer, but you can run them at audio rate and they will track so you can use them as FM sources. The other thing that you can theoretically do, uh, or at least, so in the case of the subsequent 37 CV, you can route a LFO to the control voltage output, patch that out back to the audio input of that instrument. Um, so I'm going to guess that that would be the case in this uh, once that functionality is there. Barmy. <laughs> well, it's called bronze garbage, so I'm going to guess the, some of that, some of that, uh, Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of wild. I think it's a LFO controlling the time of another LFO. Butterfly swarm. That's cool. It sounds almost like a crystallizer or something. Does it gent? I guess if you've got the uh, you've got the the chops, sure. <laughs> Can I use FM to control any destination, or is it hardwired to the oscillator? So uh, there's a couple of F FM paths. Um, there's selectable frequency modulation paths in the oscillators. There's also selectable paths in the filters, but you cannot route, for example, the oscillator to the attack time of an envelope. What you could do is run one of the LFOs at audio rate and use that in that way. The FM to the filter sounds really cool too. Yeah. Uh, There's one that. in there called like funky something or other that's got kind of an FM to the filter thing. So this one. Are you gonna show FM? Yeah. Okay, you gotta remember to tell the folks what you're doing. Sorry, I'm showing <laughs> <laughs> I'm showing FM uh, to the filter here. So in the filter, I have it going to the state variable filter and we can choose an FM source. So we're hearing uh, oscillator one, our source is three, which means oops. Yeah, there you go. It's a 
cool kind of FM filter sound. Yeah, let's listen to some more. So there's a question that says, what about changing presets per step in the sequencer so you know, you can make a track have an entire drum kit? Uh, we're not able to change presets in the sequencer, but what you do have is 20 modulation slots per synthesizer per sequencer. We can do that up. Um, let's see. Please switch octaves occasionally. OK. Showed it the other day. Yeah, we, yeah, we did. Is that uh Ooh. weird. It's not cooperating right now. Well, the instrument's been used by a number of people between <laughs> between now and the other day, so you know telling what somebody's saved at the moment. What you're hearing there is um, in the LFOs, you can have a fade in and fade out time. So if you listen closely, you get that trill that kind of comes in slowly over time. Uh, and you don't have to burn an envelope to do that. So I'm going to open the more page for LFO 1. And if you, uh, if you look here on the screen, you can see that we got a 750 some odd millisecond delay time and then the 2.8 second fade in time. So basically, um, got almost a second before the LFO starts to fade in and modulate the pitch of the sound. That's cool. Yeah, it's a great preset. Yeah. Rain brass. Oh, it's effects. Yeah, these effects really add a lot, but it, they're, it's uh, by no means dependent on them. So let's go through a few more presets and we're going to answer a couple more questions and then, yeah. let's see, can you copy paste first step modulation changes in the sequencer? Uh, no, you cannot at this point. Um, don't really have much more that I can say about that at the moment. Can you put different scales, does it say scales? You put different scales on each timbre split sequencer independently. So if, if this is, uh, let's see, different scale. So if we're talking about microtonality, um, then the answer to that is in the future, the instrument will support uh, microtonality, microtonal tuning. Um, if you're talking about, uh, well, I guess you'd be talking about microtonality in the future. Yeah, I mean, it, well, yeah, or if it's an arpeggiator, yeah, you could do that as well. You could yeah. do that as well, or do it with a sequencer. There's arpeggiator and sequencers per um, per multi-tambral synthesizer. Okay. So it sounds like we have about 10 more minutes left. So if you want to ask
ask some more questions, and then yeah. we will be uh, obviously back to do this <laughs> again and again. Yeah, that one's movement is all, I believe, the wave angles changing. Yeah, so let's turn off the effect really quick and just kind of show what that sounds like without that, without that uh, even time. <laughs> So that, that uh, evolving sound that you hear, where it opens up, is not a filter. That's a change to the wave angle. It's another great example of that. And the air that, that's kind of coming in there is, is using, making use of that. Uh, that variable color noise generator really kind of adds a, adds a nice air to the sound. The sequencer can go fast, but uh, audio rate? That's a good question. Oh, gotta make it longer. You can just edit it. There you go. Uh, just change it. So. And turn off sync. That's already off, I guess. that question at the current juncture is no. Um, doesn't mean that won't be possible in the future, but at the moment, uh, the sequencer does not run at audio rate. Can you play a self-resonating filter polyphonically? Yes, you can. The only thing to note is that the na by nature, the latter filter uh, is it's impossible to calibrate perfectly. So there's going to be variations per note. Um, so maybe feed it some noise and yeah, so this is just the, this is nothing running into the ladder filter with just the uh, resonance cranked. And I'll go down here to key tracking and turn it up to 100%. So Nick is in the filter more page, and uh, that's where we can adjust keyboard tracking and things like that. And if you add noise to the signal, between the two a little bit. Can you modulate the speed of the sequencer? Uh, I'm assuming you mean from an LFO or something like that. You cannot uh, yet. Uh, that's something that we will likely add in future firmware revisions. Is it like a, it's like a haunted house organ? <laughs> it is. Oh, and one, one trick Nick just used, if you're scrolling through presets um, and you push shift, 
you're going to create larger jumps through groups of presets because the instrument can store a lot of presets. Similarly, you have ways to filter here. You can filter by category, you can filter by mood. You can add your own categories and moods, as many as you want. Uh, also, single, multi. So uh, if you have made yourself 2,000 presets, we want you to be able to get through them as quickly as possible. This is a mono timbre preset it's making use of uh, making use of the arpeggiator, but also creating uh, making use of those uh, even tie reverbs to create kind of extended tails that feel like a pad. Yeah, that shimmer is really great. Laser Viking. <laughs> okay. Whereas Nightbirds is my favorite one. This guy right here. This bird sounds in reverb. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like we have two minutes left. So if you have any other questions, please let us know. And then, uh, if not, we'll see you again soon. That's cool. Yeah, really making use of that SVF. dry grass sound, there's no effects in there. or step length be controlled via the mod matrix? Um, no, not at this time, but it can be varied and uh, set not just 
per step, but per note in each step. And then you also can set velocity, ratcheting, note, note length for every single note within a step. And then uh, preset using all three synths. Well, this one's really there you cool. Go. Um, I'm gonna start low. So you have your bass. Uh, somebody turned off my turned off the uh, the art. Yeah, somebody turned off the art. There it is. So you have a bass and a, on one timbre, the arp on another, and then you have those waves coming in on your third one. between multiple synthesizer voices and modulate or manipulate uh, a single parameter or have it affect multiple synthesizers at once by selecting more than one uh, with the panel focus. So uh, synth two is that arpeggiation, well I guess some sequence. Synth three is the bass. But if I select both and turn the cutoff, I get both. There's one other, there's another kind of multi timbral uh, preset. Give me one second here. There's one other multi timbral preset that works kind of like this, but you're gonna have to play lower notes. And then we'll. That's all you keep on playing for a second. That's all the time we've got. So thanks for playing with us and see you next time.